Hello, everybody. Yes, yes. As always, greetings. Happy to see you. As always, glory and pleasure to take up the cross of Yeshua and glorify Yahweh. Now, we talk to you about Israel. You know, a lot of people take, you know, I went to Israel, a lot of people took it for a joke. Now, let me tell you something about Israel. Number one, I went to Israel. I came back with no pictures. This one, number one, I didn't have no camera. Didn't have a phone. And when I said I was going to glorify God, so you know what? Beautiful, but the one picture that I remember is when I healed the man. So God was glorified, as I said. Now, let me tell you something about what Israel means. Israel means the truth. You understand? So the truth of being of Israel is to know is to know that you're of God, know that you're Jew, know that you're you know that you glorify God. You take up the cross of Yahweh and you stand for truth. And, you know anybody that cracks a joke or make jokes or try to be funny, you know you're not of Israel. You're of Egypt. You're of Rome. You're of, of that Rome. You're of, you're of that holly. You're of the holly tree. You understand? So one thing we got to realize: Israel on my job. Yes, I'm Israel. Uh, I'm a believer. So you know what? I don't work with the dark side. I don't work with Egyptians. I don't work with those that don't play games. I don't work with those that work for the most low. I only work with those that work for the most high. So I don't work on the dark side. So you know, so when you come at me and you think that you're, you know, being smooth, no. Egyptians think they had game. Egyptians thought they could worship gods. And who was only God? Israel, God of Israel. So, on a job, if you don't understand the truth, you're not of Israel. Uh, in your marriage, if y'all both don't understand, you're not of Israel. You understand? If you go to Israel, you're not going for God. You're not of Israel. If you continue to play games with God, you're definitely not of Israel. You're of the Israel. That's the harlot if you do that. Now, what it means, you the Israel. That means to glorify God all the way. You understand? So shift your attention from me and shift your attention to the God of Israel, the King of Israel, Yeshua. That's what you have to do. You understand? So when I do things, it's for the God of Israel. So when I work, when I stack, when I do pallets, it's for the God of Israel. So when you come and you do it also, it better be for the God of Israel or if not, you're casted out by the God of Israel. And that's the promise from the God of Israel that he has to his children. You understand? See, I don't just pray to God. I don't just pray in the name of Yeshua. I have a relationship. I'm born again. So I don't just use the name. And think, oh, yeah, I use the name and I'm happy. No. No. I've, I'm delivered. So when I do that pallet, when I get that position, when I go to Israel, when I go home, when I'm released, when I'm happy, when I'm fasting, when I'm doing this, when I'm casting out your demon and saying, get thee behind the, your, your, your Egyptian and get out of here, that's because that's authority comes from Israel. You understand? That's what you got to realize. So when authority comes from Israel, you have no choice but to listen. Because you don't have authority. So when you lack authority, you cannot, you can't, you can't, have, you, you don't have leadership. When you lack authority, what are you? A follower. Like the Egyptians, they are followers of the God of Israel. They follow. So when you follow, you got to remember, you're nothing but a follower. How are you going to lead and be a follower? A counterfeits can never lead. And that's the point. You understand? So that's what it means to be from Israel. So you got to understand what that really means. You know, so a lot of people was cracking jokes and making jokes. Ha, you know, right, because they didn't see pictures. But as I told them, as I told one Egyptian, I said, brother, you better stop your adultery. You understand? Because first of all, I didn't go to Israel for your sake. You understand? I went to, because I wanted to glorify God. I didn't go for you or no one else. So I don't have to take a picture or anything. You understand? But if you're not glorifying God, why are you worried about pictures? If you're not glorifying God, why are you worried about work? If you're not glorifying God, why are you worried about someone else? If you're not glorifying God, why are you even talking? Exactly. Because you live in a fake world. See? I live in the world of Israel. My world is not fake. You understand? I know what it takes. I know what it takes. I've been there and I'm going back. And I'm coming back with pictures. Oh, but Egyptian, you still got to glorify God. And no matter who you, you still got to glorify God. That means nothing. You understand? I'm going for God, as I told you from the very get-go. 
So see y'all that don't listen, that don't understand, that don't have a that don't have a distinct understanding. I live for God. When I die, I'm returning to the Father. When you die, some of you think your job can save you. Some of you think your friends can save you. Some of you think your mother and your father and your babies can save you. Some of you think your culture can save you. Some of you think your religion can save you. Because you know why you're putting all that over God. That's not of Israel. You understand? Let me tell you something. To walk, to walk and to be of Israel, you got to be tough. God got to raise you up. You understand? You're not going to raise yourself up. You're not going to try to be, bum. you know, I'm Mr. Smooth. I'm Mr. Yeah, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Right. No. You're Mr. Nothing. So all, all, the, all the games are over. You understand? So when you look at me, you ain't seen nothing but a temple of gods. So if you don't like the temple of gods, if you don't like the word truth, if you don't like the word God, if you don't like the Yahweh, if you don't like Yeshua, you shouldn't be around me. And believe you me, the promise of God is he will curse those that curse me and bless those that bless me because I am the seed of Abraham's. Now, that's just how it is. You understand? So, right, and I always want to talk about many of you were given over to a, rep a, rep a reprobate mind. Yeah, you were given over to a, rep a, rep a reprobate mind. You know why? Because you thought you were smart. And see, this is what I've always, I preach this one. Don't think you're smart. Don't think that, you know, you're going to come from a child of Israel and think you're going to get over. Think you're going to be a ruler. You don't rule nothing. So first of all, counterfeits, as I said, counterfeits don't rule. So now, the foolishness of, that you have in you, you've shown. And see, that's what it means to be of Israel. God allows us to see your foolishness. Allows you to be that fool, that clown, that counterfeit, that wannabe. That's always tagging along, following behind, and trying to look better. But you can never look better. Because you can never shine in the light that I have. And you might think, well, that's, bo that's boastful to say. Well, it is because you know what? My shine is from God. Where do you get your shine from? So remember, you can't... Oh, let, let me get my, my shine from him. You can never take God's shine. Because see, the shine belongs to me to God. The, sh the shine belongs to God. It's given them to me. So you can never take my shine. So, once again, you can be the best worker. You can be the best talker. You can be the best whatever. You can be the best manipulator. You can be the best communicator. But you're not the best God. You're not the one and only God. So that's why you can never win. Because see, when it comes to those that try to challenge the power of God, I give them right over to God. So let me tell you something. No matter what you see me doing, if you're challenging me, and you're in, e you're in Egypt or you're a Roman, oh, you're not challenging me, you're challenging God. Because see, I don't get vengeance on the Romans or the Egyptians. Vengeance is God's always. So, if you think that you're challenging me, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. You're challenging God. So, you're right before his very throne thinking you're going to go against God? Now, how foolish is that? Let's see your job save you. Let's see your mother save you. Let's see your father save you. Let's see your nation save you from the almighty God. So you were given over to a reprobate mind, and I said because you thought you were smart, because you thought you were, you know, you thought you could do things on your own. So now you see you can't do it. You can't get that easy job. You can't get, you can't get the easiest job ever. Very, I mean, I have a very, very easy job. Very easy job. Very easy. One dude, one Egyptian, one principality couldn't take an easy job that was right in his face. And he said he didn't want to take the job. You know, as a, as a means of trying to be... Trying to be funny, trying to be manipulative, but see the thing is, the job was so easy, you couldn't take it because God gave you to a reprobate mind for you thinking you were smart. Remember, you came in with the other Egyptian. The other Egyptian had deaths in his family, had deaths at the death, and he couldn't take it no more. And you, you actually thought that you were smart enough to go against God. You thought you were smart, right? You couldn't take it easy, easy, easy pallet job. See, God gave you to a reprobate mind. As I said before, let me say it again. Remember, you had all the tools. You did this. You did this. You did that. You did that. You did that. And you couldn't take an easy job like that. You know why? Because God just showed you how foolish you were for not relying on God and trying to rely on yourself. Now, look at you. See, let me tell you guys. Don't think you're smart. 
You all see before you do anything, you go to God. Before you get married, you go to God. Before you have a child, you go to God. Before you work, go to God. Before you do whatever, or before you even fast to do what you're doing, go to God. Make sure what you're doing is correct. You know what I'm saying? Because all the pitfalls, all the situations you're going to go through, as long as you go to God, God will always have you. It's going to be tough, of course. You know, we have a tough God, we have a tough loving God. But you will always be safe. You know, but when you, when you think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this into my own hands. You know, this looks easy. He looks lame. She, she looks weak. He looks weak. It's not going to work. Especially, especially not if the person is covered by God. See, that's my thing. Thank God I was covered. Because I'm not going to lie, I took, I took many, uh, many losses out here because, you know, I, I couldn't defeat these, uh, like I said, these repetitive, reprobate mind characters. You know, they, 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 go, they go strong for what they want. You know, they can't, they, you know, like I said, they're very weak, but they're repetitive with it. I mean, they, they don't stop. So if I wasn't covered by the blood of Yeshua, I would be in trouble. You know, I said before, right, my job would be in jeopardy. Uh, you know, my baby, the woman, a lot of things would be in jeopardy. You know, and I would be in subject, but that's the thing. They're in subject because they don't understand. I'm in subject to God, and they're trying to put themselves over me, which you can't because only, it's only God that's over me. And like I said, you know, you can't show your hand and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to show my hand, and now I'm going to get over, you know. So God puts you into a, a, a rip of your mind. You look like a, you look foolish, right? See, some of the people I know, there's a lot of people I know wish they never even made the tour from Africa or made the tour from this place and that place. You know why? Because when God... Put you in a reprobate mind, it, it makes you look. It makes you look like wow. I took this trip for no reason, right? You, you took a trip just to be a counterfeit. You understand, right? Why? Why I'm you know going to Israel to follow my God, and that's the beauty of it. That's the glory of it, and that's the thing. You know, you can't stop. You can't stop the hands of God, as I say. It's all about God and God's glory. You can't stop that and say, and that's what I'm saying. See, when you see me, you see God's glory because you see what God has done for me. And see, I'm one of the very few. One of the very few. As I said, just born a sinner like anybody. We all born in the sin. A wretched individual, form of godliness, going back here, going back there, holding grudges, doing this and doing that and doing that and doing this. But when God freed me, the blood of Yeshua freed me, and me being born again and me being saved, I got so much testimony. And that's the point. That's the beauty of it. See, I have testimony. I speak not of myself. You understand, but people don't understand that because when they see me, they're looking at who they knew, me. So they're looking at me and saying, oh, wow, wow, wow. You know, instead of saying, oh, God, wow, wow, wow. Because he wants born again, God is giving, even though I'm telling the testimony to, to a reprobate mind because they're not understanding. Once born again, instead of understanding who God is and saying, wow, God, wow, there is a God. God is a loving God. There's a loving Yeshua. There's a, you know, maybe I better do this. They're looking at me and saying, oh, yeah, I could do that too. And then they're getting this right, getting blown to rip up your mind. You know why? Because you're trying to follow, you trying to follow the faith of a man, but the faith of the man is in God. You understand? So the faith you're trying to follow has to be in God. The faith that you follow has to be saying, I'm gonna take up my cross. That has to be the faith. The faith that you're following has to be the Holy Spirit. You can't have see my faith and think, wow, okay, I'm gonna right. Because I'm gonna say it again. Anybody can stop smoking weed. Anybody can stop uh, drinking. Anybody can stop something because they have a baby. Anybody can say, oh, I'm going to go to school. Anybody can say, oh, I'm going to get this job. See, that's all carnal. That's all carnal. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take, it doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're born again because you do something good. You can just do that. As I said, right, the most evilest person can do something good. It does not make you born again. Born again means you have to take up the cross of Jesus, the cross of Yeshua, you have to accept God and you have to get the Holy Ghost. And you're, you're going to get the Holy Ghost once you do that. But you have to, you know, you're, yeah, you're, well, you have to be willing. You have to be willing and change. You have to, you have to say that you, you want to love God. You want to glorify God, you know. And, and, you, and, and you, have, you have to say, you have to be sorry, to really be sorry for what you're doing. And, you know, and be, really want to get out what you're going through. Because that's what I was going through so much. So you have to really, you have to really, you have to be desperate. For God, so you can't be desperate to hear my stories. If you be desperate just just to hear my stories, then you're just desperate to hear my stories, and in vain, you're gonna lose out. Because once again, you're not connecting to God. You're connecting to the man telling the stories. As I said before, I'm crucified. I'm dead. I'm just a temple for God. God is the one you look to. God is the one to glorify. So when you see my shine, when you see my story, when you see me happy, when you see me smiling, when you see me healing, when you see me healing, that's all God. Working through me, not me working through God. 
And that goes for any saint that, you know what I mean? And, those, and the saints that know that, know that. And they will tell you the same exact thing. So it doesn't matter if you see me saying, say, singing a song for God. That doesn't mean that I have time. I'm mean, singing a song for God because it's glory unto God. If you see me doing anything for God, I mean, it's glory unto God. You know, you can't look at me and think you're going to, you can't skip God and think you're going to look to me. You can't skip God and look to the preacher. You can't skip God and look to the pastor. You can't skip God and look to the Pope. You can't skip God and look to the president. You can't skip God and look to the situation. God is the creator of the, God is the creator of the situation and God is the, well, God is the solution to, to the situation if it's a circumstance that you can't handle. God is the solution to that. But you know, God is the creator of all and God is greater than all. So don't ever think that you can you can overstep and overlook God because that's the that's the, that's that's the most that's the worst abomination ever. That's just what I'm saying, right? So you know, once more and again, you have to look at God. And when your spirit comes to you, you will preach God. You will preach Yeshua. You will preach the cross. You will preach the Holy Ghost because you will preach all that you know. But you won't preach what someone looking at you and thinking that you're preaching. They think you're preaching yourself. You, you say, if I'm preaching myself, then I'll be preaching the past of who I am. I won't be preaching, you know what I'm saying? What you're seeing to, to, today was not a renewal of myself. It was a renewal of God put into me. But God put into me is just the Holy Spirit. That's all it is. It's not what you think. It's not what you want to see. And that's why all demons get cast to the side. But the, at the same time, they'll try to fool your mind. So as I said before, Remember, the only way you gonna make, only way of changing what you are gonna be is made is if you go to God. Other than that, you didn't change. Yeah, other than that, you just change in the world, and it has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. So don't even try to, uh, don't even try to say that. You know, you gotta find God. You gotta really become Israel. That's what it is. And you can't keep following. Like I said, you can't keep following man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one to follow because I'm not an idol. I'm not Egyptian. I'm not a Roman. I don't, I'm not an idol. I'm not a statue. Take up the cross of your shoe and follow God and see what God has for you. You understand? You listen to me talk all day, but if you're not following God, then you just, you're just listening to me for no reason. Because I'm definitely not your God. I'm no one's God. I'm not a God. I'm none but a servant that's preaching the word because it's supposed to. That's one thing I'm going to tell you, because if I wasn't supposed to do this, then I oh, believe me, this, will, this won't be what I would be doing. But God's put it in my heart to do this. I never knew I was going to do this. I just point, that's the beauty of stuff. You understand? See, I didn't have to look at another preacher or pastor and say, oh, you know what I'm saying? I could be better than this one. I could be better than that one. I could be like, no, no. When you get the Holy Ghost, God implants on each of our hearts what we're going to do. God implants on our heart. Then we start to do it. We don't compete because there's no, there's no need to compete. Because first of all, if you love God, that's what you got to love. God. So there's no need to say, oh yeah, you know, I, I, you know, right, no. So that's what I'm saying, right. So it's not like, you know, we listen to other preachers and just said, oh, okay, you know, let me follow, let me do right. No, no. God put on your heart. The Holy Ghost is who you're following. The Holy Counselor is who you're following. You're not, you're not following no one else. Because when God, when God purifies your heart, all that negativity, all that dirt goes away. You know, in any other form or fashion that it may, it may, it may try to return. Of course, it's gonna tempt and test you. But don't get me wrong. With the Holy Counselor, the Holy Peace, which is the Holy God, which is the cross of Yeshua, you have nothing to worry about. You know, just other than, you know, other than those that's gonna be misled because they chose, they, they, they they're choosing to be misled. You understand, right? Because you remember. If you got the Almighty God, that means you got the Almighty Spirit in you. So the Almighty is what scares people the most. So remember, people don't mind um, idolizing Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, or John F. Kennedy, or, or this one and that one. Remember, they're not the Almighty God. So they don't mind admiring them. They don't mind, all right, or looking at me, or looking at you, or looking at him. They don't mind doing that. Remember, or the Pope, or whatever, or um, President Trump. Remember, we're not the Almighty God. So it's much easier to worship a man that you see instead of worshiping the invisible God that has done more than any of us ever could do. And that is in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Dear Father, dear Lord, dear God, gracious Yahweh, Abba, thank you, Father. 
Oh, bless this, bless this sermon, bless this testimony, bless Israel, the children of yours, Lord, the Jew that you have made through through the blood of Yeshua. Lord, bless us. Let us continue to fellowship with one another, to fellowship through your spirit, the Holy Spirit, the mighty counselor, with you, Lord, in mind, always, and just to look to you. Never look to oneself, because when we look to oneself, our devices are just as ignorant as Satan. The Lord, we don't follow Satan. We follow a mighty God. We follow the Most High. We follow you. We take up the cross of Yeshua, and Lord, we crucify the flesh, and we live in the Spirit. So in Spirit is how we help one another, and we only do what you teach us. And what you, see, what you teach us is to glorify you, to praise you, to love you, put you first, to put ourselves last, and you take care of the rest. But to continue to glorify you, you will never put down our cross, never put up, never put up our swords, and know that vengeance is yours. And fight the fight to the good end, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, peace, love you.